Okay, it's around 7.14 on uh, Tuesday, July 12th, and I'd like to open the uh, business meeting for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, the Board of Appeals will conduct this meeting according to rules laid out in Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Robert's Rules of Order and its own particular set of rules entitled Rules of Procedure, a copy of which is on file with the town <coughs> clerk. Another copy is available from the clerk at this meeting. And this meeting is being tape recorded for the purposes of taking minutes. And once the minutes are approved, the tape may be taped over. Uh, first order of business, do we want to do chairman or yeah, we want to? First. Okay, so first order of business will be nominations for chairman. Current chairman uh, Gina Thibault is late for this meeting, but we're going to proceed without her. So would anyone like to? I'd like to nominate sign? Jeff yeah. to be chairman. Second. <laughs> All right. I guess I accept the nomination if there. Are there any others? Yeah, he has to accept, accept it first. Excuse me? He, did accept it. he has to accept it first, yeah. Well, thank you. Accept it. <laughs> Would you like to uh, put your name on as a... Thank you. No. no. Your next year. John, no. Two years. No. Is it two years now? Is it two years? It's been a few I years. I don't have the skills. Gina was two years. Paul was two before that, and I've done it so well. So I'm, I'm happy to do that for another year, if that's what you guys are going to do. So we need great. to do uh, a... Thank you, thank you Jeff. Thank you. On that, or are we doing... Yeah, let's, that, it doesn't hurt. Do I vote on this or no? I can't remember. No. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor to nominate me as chairman. I guess all those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> I guess I'll abstain. <laughs> Unanimous. Unanimous. So, okay. I guess I'm chairman. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, thank welcome. you. Now you can send them up. Now I can, I can move over. That was exciting. Whew. This is an election year, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, second order of business is to approve the minutes of June seventh, twenty sixteen. Do I hear a motion? Like a motion to approve the minutes for June seventh, two thousand sixteen. Second. Okay. okay. Motion on the floor to approve the minutes is there and seconded. Is there any discussion? Nope. Not? Nobody? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Dave abstains. Abstain. Dave abstains. Motion carries. Um, okay, so there's no, we usually have the monthly finance update, so I need to um, sit with the town accountant to reconcile the FY16 and start the FY17. So um, I'm doing that. The end of this week or the beginning of next week. So, okay. at the next meeting, I'll have reconciled 16 and show you what starts for 17. Okay. You don't, do you have any warrants that are nope. outstanding or needing <coughs> to be approved at this point? No. None. Okay. Um, so, the next item then would be correspondence, right? Yes. So, uh -oh. Long Hill Road? Yeah, building correspondence. So, um, Aiton Hall, Long Hill Road. So, I met with the applicant and the contractor. So, this is an addition for an accessory apartment. Uh, they are in the process of getting their plans ready. And it'll probably take at least a couple weeks. So, it, it'll be a September um, date for that. I, I do have other um, ones out there that one can just come in tomorrow it's with an attorney um, i'm still waiting on national ave i think you may i may have told you that about another uh, concrete mm -hmm. concrete crushing operation <laughs> a second perhaps what's the what's the deadline to meet for the august hearing tomorrow morning she said is that your, so yeah, said they would tomorrow? have had to file they would have had to file July 5th. Oh, oh so. Okay, is. so there's nothing on the docket, no right. hearings in the docket for August. Okay. Right. So, were we going to, I don't mean I don't mean to jump around, but. Yeah. Um, do we want to meet in August? Or you want to skip wanna, and meet? Yeah, is there a reason to meet in August? It's just the finance stuff. You no, know, Paul and I are both. You're missed, both away. We're both away the first week. Yeah. If we did want to meet, it would probably have to be the second week if we wanted to do that. Okay. 
Do you think it's necessary from an administrative standpoint, or can we wait till September? No, I can wait. Okay. There's nothing I need. And if I need something signed, if I needed ink or something, I can just leave it at the station. So not to not to jump around, but do you, do we want to say our next meeting then would be September? I don't have the date. Six. It's right on the bottom of the agenda. Perfect. The day after Labor Day. Right. So the next meeting would be Tuesday, September sixth. Um, so that application will be that night. Um, then we have received a um, public hearing notice from the planning board for 1A and 1B Spalding Road. They're looking to do a common driveway. Um, and just today I received, uh, when I came back in, I received this from West Street, which is West Street, Tid's Junkyard, West Street. Mm -hmm. um, they were to file a notice of intent. If you look at the second page, I just gave you a copy of the front of the notice of intent, and the second page is the board, your 2015 letter, um, just stating that the permit was still valid and that they were going to need to file a new notice of intent to begin the construction phase, which includes a water treatment plant um, in which they will have to give us a letter of credit um, from a commercial bank with a term in not less than five years in the amount of $100,000 to secure the construction of that treatment plant and prior to any building permits being issued. So um, that's, I just stuck that in your agenda. That just came in today. I wanted to, thinking we weren't going to be here in August, I just wanted to put that in there. Um, the application's not ready. And the only other thing was you would, I think Jeff, you had said let's carry it over under old business, was just talking about meeting minutes and how extensive you guys want them to be or not. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my thing is just if it's something that's really complicated and in depth. I can, you know, I put in more. And if it's something a little simpler, maybe we can cut them down to cut down on the time it takes. I, I think you can summarize certain conversations Summar yeah. that, I mean, it's all on tape now. Nothing gets taped over, so it's right. all on video. If anybody wants to go back, right. it's, it's available. Yeah. So <clears throat> my personal view, without really reviewing the... Uh, the open meeting law too carefully. My thing is that they need to be accurate. So if they're oversimplified and not too specific, then they're accurate. Right. If we try to get too specific and things aren't quite right, right. then now the minutes aren't necessarily correct. So, so I'm, gonna, you know what I'm getting at. Oh, I know yeah. exactly. So what when you're you saying. try to get every word and now something's not quite Sometimes right, a it loaded. takes forever to do it, and right. b they're not always exactly correct, and the meanings can can not be consistent sometimes that's not on you I'm just saying yeah this is what happens so as you said if, if it's something that's obviously very relevant and necessary to have in there then you take the extra time to put those details in if it's general conversation or something about the you know the applicant described the project in detail including XYZ as opposed to you know every word then I, th I think Okay. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we can we can talk about that further. It's sometimes pretty clear you summarize right here. too much, it's, then you don't understand. You get lost, right? right. Basically, yeah. it's, the, it's the time and place of the meeting is the most important thing, and then it's simply a summary Multiple. of the discussion on each subject. Just a summary. Yep. That's fine. That would cut it a lot out because, like you said, it's already digitally recorded, and it's it's always there if people need it. List of the documents and exhibits, which you always do. Yeah. And the decisions that are made. That's it. If you feel there's something really the pertinent. It not be a verbatim transcription. Book. Yeah, it's, there, there might be something that comes up that's pertinent, whether, you know, councils are here and, you know, something like that. Yeah. You know, it's a very, uh, it's a big point. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's highlighted or it's, you know, <laughs> you know, as discussed further between Koppelman and whoever, you know, the other attorney is. Mm. You know, you can highlight certain things, but a lot of stuff, you know, a summary is fabulous. Does that make sense? I'm going to have 
Sharon, if she can help me summarize. <laughs> there you go. <coughs> I know how hard it is. Okay, Gina, you arrived at seven. <clears throat> and I apologize. No worries. No problemo. You're not chairman already. anymore, so. Well, uh, did that <laughs> happen? You I didn't show up action. and I got off. You got the boot. <laughs> We had our convention, and you know. So and that's what I was going to ask. Are you official? Yeah, I, I am. I'm in your seat. I always, I would have voted for you as chair, <laughs> just for the record. Do you want to take a five-minute recess, or just are we done? Um, I under correspondence. Yep. We, I have received a couple of emails from Les as far as the Duncan's Plaza, so just. So that everybody knows, I have corresponded with him about their need to come back to us, and in my opinion, I think you were copied on a couple of those emails. I don't know if you read them or not, but he was looking for interpretation on our previous decision. So I was, I have been helping him interpret what that decision, the variance decision. You helped me write that one, as I recall. Um, with regards to what the, the, uh, the signage, or? they're changing some uses in there, so right. they, they're yeah. ch getting uh, some potential yeah. new tenants, and so his view was he thought maybe they had to come back to us, and I've been corresponding with him they're on I parking. think two occasions, and I said as long as they're meeting parking and septic, and the use is listed, we gave them a variance for those uses. Right. If yep. those uses meet and are consistent with what we gave them, then I've, I've kind of said they don't need to come back. Yeah, so, because we gave so they're going to be driving school, medical, restaurant. Mm -hmm. Um, that and another one. And retail, I thought. Retail. Retail. Is retail. So there's a Domino's Pizza. That's right now looking. Right. Considered a restaurant. And that's just a takeout. It's not it's even. A, it's another restaurant. They, he said, well, they only had one restaurant at the time. I said, it doesn't matter. We didn't say you can have one of these and one of those. It was any combination provided you didn't exceed the, limitate, the limitations of the site with regards to parking and septic. That was our big thing. We didn't want to give some perceived... Um, right to exceed, you know, code on those mm -hmm. aspects. So that's why that. Anyway, so uh, anyway, I've been corresponding with him. So it, it, I don't think there's a need for them to come back to us. I don't think they will. But Patty will obviously yeah, keep us in the loop if they need to do it. So, so if I, they do, just a reminder that I recuse myself. So oh, you yeah. have to factor. I mean, I think we have enough people now. But <coughs> I mean, they have the water resource. Okay. They. They got it. Well, at so this point, that they, they're got it. They got it. he agrees that they don't need to come back. Good. So, and we're not. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to review their parking place. That would be planning, Great. and the septic would be health. So, yep. anyway, Good. so that's all I had. Do we want to? Well, we can't meet till seven thirty yeah. on the hearing anyway. We got about five minutes, so we'll take a five minute recess. Yes. And we'll open the hearing on or about slightly after seven thirty. Okay. The motion to close the business. Oh, second. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we have a motion to close and seconded by Sharon. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Business meetings closed.
Absolutely. I look forward to it. I deserve it too. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's about 7.35 uh, on uh, July 12th, 2016, and I'd like to open the hearing for 55 Bailey Lane. If the applicant wants to come on up and you guys can have a seat. Um, while you're doing that, um, Jeannie, do you mind reading the legal mm -hmm. notice for this? A, pe a petition has been filed by John Roy A. Connell and Rhoda Samara of, hope I'm pronouncing that right, of 55A Bailey Lane, Georgetown, Mass, for modification of a previous variant ZBA file number 86-1 for an addition that will encroach on the required front side setbacks and a variance for an existing deck that encroaches on the required setbacks in the RC zone. Pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 10, and the Georgetown Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 165, Article 2, Sections 9 and 84, the premises affected is 55A, Bailey Lane, Georgetown, Mass., and identified on the assessor's map, 6A, Lot 15. The petition will be heard by the Georgetown Zoning Board of Appeals at the Georgetown Town Hall, third floor meeting room, on July 12, 2016, at 7.30 p.m. Okay, thank you. Um, it's going to take a second. I'm going to introduce some members for you. Um, uh, Sharon Freeman is an alternate tonight. Uh, Sean Dean is a regular member. Paul Schillen, Dave Katniss, and Gina Tebow are all regular members. I'll be the chairman. I'm Jeff Moore. And our clerk, you've probably already met, is Patty Pitari. I think I drove her nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no. So the uh, five regular members will be voting on this tonight, but Sharon will be involved in the hearing and is free to discuss, but she would not be be voting. Okay. Um, so if you want to introduce yourself and let us know what's going on and uh, resident yes, 2012. Um, my wife and I were, uh, you know, exploring the idea of going up a second floor. And uh, we didn't initially know that the previous owners had pulled the uh, a permit for the addition on the garage. We found out about that and we thought, you know, you just pulled the permit. It was fine. As I came for my permit, when I talked to Mr. Gordon downstairs, they had to file for a variance. I was under the impression that that variance would allow me to go up, even though I wasn't encroaching closer to the property lines, not knowing that <coughs> going up still increased the nonconformity, even though it wasn't moving toward the property line itself. Hence, we're here at this moment. Okay, you want to talk a little bit about the, the project, maybe, and what your what your plans are, and what. So, explain what's existing and what you plan to change. Absolutely. Um, and then I'll see you guys can I'll take care of that. So, this is the existing first floor. And currently, the, the roof is framed with trusses, and 16 inches on center. So, my, everything's going to be a little bit more involved than with a traditionally framed roof. Um, can you speak up? I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to lay down 16 inch TGIs every 12 inches on center so that I can sister up the existing trusses. Uh, once they get sisted up and shored up, I'm gonna chop off the top of the trusses and lay down my, my sub floor. Then second floor walls and then trusses for the main portion of the roof, but above the master bedroom, which is right now above the garage, um, I was gonna do traditional framing rafters. Um, <coughs> Second floor layout. Uh, when it comes to the top of the stairs, there'll be a landing that's going <coughs> to end up being an office. Uh, we have two accessory bedrooms here with a community bath. Uh, master bedroom, like I said, above the garage with the master, uh, master bath and a, a walk-in closet. <coughs> Let me take you over to some elevations. This is the proposed second floor. So existing right now is everything you see from the soccer line down. Uh, we're going to cantilever over the front one foot. Off the back, we're going to cantilever over 18 inches. Uh, there will be no cantilever on the, the master bedroom above the garage. Um,
And that, that cantilever is right on the, uh, that's the non-conforming end of the building, right? So that would be perfect if you're not making that any wider. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the intent is right now, due to budgetary expenses, we're going to do hardy clapboard siding on the, the second floor. Uh, first floor is to exist and to remain at a later date. We'll match the, the second floor just to just to keep it homogeneous, so to speak. Paul, well, just to clarify your question, the cantilevers are on the sides that are meeting setbacks. Yes, they are. Yep. Yep. Right. And as the setback comes to a corner, as the house comes to a corner. Yep. And that that projection does not project into the side the area that does not meet the setback. Correct. Yep. Thank you. Uh, here we some, have some elevations on the, the side. I actually have a uh, a plan showing the the average grade as well. Uh, <clears throat> nothing special here, other than you get to see the the total height, the total width, and the cantilevers themselves. Now we are going to do a bump out on the front above the garage, but that's going opposite of the side that would be encroaching uh, the setback that we have right now. Um, it's coming off the front of the garage, which is going toward the street, and I believe I have 160 feet to Bailey Lane. Um, it's not going off the side or the back, which would be encroaching in on the, the existing areas. I was going to ask if there's any audience. Do uh, you want to continue a little bit? Or are you? Uh, a little bit. I just want to okay. give a little sure, background of. Oh, good. All right. That was a block plan. This is always the best. Though. Oh, yeah. No, so, so I have a lot of help. I've spent a lot of time during the day coming down, asking questions, and less has been fantastic. Um, learned a little bit about my property, what happened. I uh, believe the permit was pulled in 82, it was built in 83. Um, this garage, when they pulled the permit, did the variance, I believe, it was in 84. Um, 86. 86. 86, I think. So it was 86. John, could you just speak up a little bit? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> what ended up happening, I found out that if you look at the front, we need 160 feet with the linear frontage in order to have a residence on the property. Uh, back then, I think the minimum requirement was. Uh, the existing is 80,000 square feet for a res residence for the RC uh, zoning. Back then it was, I believe, an acre. Not 100% positive. Um, <clears throat> my neighbors, Tracy Lots here, um, they own the property behind us. Oh, it's 200. They only had, the previous owner only had 40 feet worth of frontage. Their driveway ended up becoming a, a private way in order to give them 160 feet worth of road frontage to build that residence there. <clears throat> which changed my setback from here from a 40-foot side yard setback to a 50-foot front yard setback, mm -hmm. which is what encroached on the, uh, the garage itself. Mm. Okay. But you got a variance to do, well, not you, but there's a variance on the property to build the garage, I think. Is that right? Correct. That variance was for side setback. Yes. Because the, the construction of that garage was going to encroach on the side. The house was already built. Correct. So what, and, and a variance is permanent, so it goes with the property. So you, know, you, know, you, you own this variance here, Correct. which is what it specifically allows you to do. And there's a, there's a plan in here that says that the, it's 
to be, be built to the plans and all that. So this is exactly what was what's allowed in perpetuity. So I'm just I'm a little bit confused what it was allowing. So this was, and I know this wasn't you that. that oh, I, I saw the previous variance when I went through it. It was uh, painted with an extremely broad brush. That's what they did in the 80s. My understanding is the variance. They, they was... granted a variance to build the garage because they felt that. I, for whatever reason, it wasn't it came close. originally right. It wasn't originally the fault of the original property owners. It, it was no longer. It was the fact that that became a corner lot. So the setback needed to be fifty yeah. feet instead of forty feet. Mm -hmm. Somehow that. So that that's at least that's what is explained to us by the building inspector here. The. About the original no, no, our building inspector. He has a he has a nice description here. Just looking for the application. <clears throat> you talking about the heritage was, way plan there. that was uh, put in in eighty five. This is what I uh, heritage way was approved by the Georgetown Planning Board in nineteen eighty four and constructed along the former side property line of the lot causing the lot to become a corner lot in which a 50-foot front yard setback is required because it's a corner so it's both heritage way setback and bailey lane setback both have to be 50 feet so they decided because that became an actual road that it messed up the setbacks but they decided to grant the variance anyways because it sort of was after the fact of the house being built so it changed the house when it was built, they could have put that addition on there, but when Heritage Way went in, then they couldn't, so they decided to allow it. I think that's what the variance was for. Though. Well, well, we'll deliberate, deliberate that a little bit. Is there anybody in the audience that has any uh, anything they'd like to say about the application? Has any comments? Sure. If you want to stand up and just introduce sure. your, yourself, uh, with your name and address, and yeah, my name is Norman Marquis. I work at, live at 64 Bailey Lane. Norman, can you just sign in right there and sure? Talk to I do there. a lot of things at the same time. Huh? <laughs> 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 I know. I've served on a number of these boards as, as well as the finance committee for a number of years. Uh, I've lived in Georgetown since uh, 1975 and on Bailey Lane since that time. Uh, I'm very excited about the young people moving in, number one, and wanting to make the improvements that should have been made numbers of years ago. His uh, quote is this, little house, I'd like to see a bigger house because I live across the street and the house that was built was just a small house. And I can't find anything wrong with the expansion of that house. Um, in fact, I'm very much in favor of it. And these other neighbors that are sitting here, who have been my neighbors for, well, fairly new, you know, number of years, but I'm the oldest one on the street right now. I hate to admit to that, but. Uh, no, I'm very much in favor of it. My wife is very much in favor of it. Uh, and like I said, I've been on a number of your boards in the Finance Committee for seven years, uh, so I paid my dues in Georgetown. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Is there anybody else that has any other comment on this? Or? I'm confused with the setbacks. Why is it 40 and 50 I was here? Can I just check the name, please? I'm sorry, yeah, you have this, to introduce yourself. My name is Gene right. Hummer, 55 Bailey Lane. Thank you. I, right to the right of him as you go. Oh, have you signed? Have you signed in, sir? I'm sorry. Have you signed in? Yes, I, I have. Right. But I like you. Um, I'm confused about the setbacks. I thought we are in RC, and I thought that was all grandfathered under 30 foot setback on sides. That's what's on my deed. So I don't know why we're talking about a 50 and a 40 and. Because of a road going by or a driveway going by or just, just something that says that they're 30 feet? It was grandfather when I bought the property and everybody on that whole side 
Well, the, the street was whatever, grandfathered. Whatever those. S R C. Whenever to, in, briefly to explain how how it may right, have may have happened. Right. So what happened was a lot of these lots were undersized yes. compared yeah. to today's zoning code. A lot of them had camps that were built too close and have been modified over the years. Some of them were built. Yeah. So once the zoning is revised, which can be revised at, at any time, and the town votes on it. Any new construction must meet whatever the zone says. Uh, in this case, the setback requirements are, are 40 feet for RC. That's, that's any, under new construction. Correct. Yeah. So any pre-existing construction then would be considered a pre-existing non-conforming structure. Yeah. You're not going to be asked to tear it down, but if you wanted to expand that in any way, then it would require some special permission by the town through this board through either a special permit or a variance, um, depending on what it is you want it to do. So when you say everybody is grandfathered, anything that predates the current zoning would technically be considered grandfathered, which means you have the right to enjoy that property as it stands okay. and modify it to, to, to the extent that it, whatever that modification is meets today's zoning code. Uh, but if there's something that you want to do that exceeds that, then you'd have to get a variance. Now in this case, and this is, I am equally confused, there's already a variance on the property for the, the addition, not the home, but the addition that was built. And in that original variance, and you guys have had a little chance, it's, I don't know, very, it's, it's very a little bit strange. It explains what's existing and it shows an addition and the variance is for that addition that's in question now that he wants to expand on. At the time you were granted, your previous owner was the property, the, and variances, by the way, are permanent with the property for year and ever after. So this variance was granted to build this, which is an addition, and it's not all that detailed. And I don't even know exactly the in my mind yet. The footprint that he has now is evidently uh, provided it, nothing else was built other than what, what's on here. Um, and that can't be modified now without a modification of the variance. So at the time, the house complied. The addition evidently did not, for whatever reasons. A variance was required. It was granted. Now he'd like to modify the piece of the property that is within the SEF tax, essentially. Correct. correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm no, correct. correct. And that requires us to modify this variance that's already in place, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're right. Just, so, 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 but what I'm a little confused about myself, and I'm going to... So the first time the variance came along, it went back to the two-acre requirement in RC? Because these are supposed to all be two-acre lots. That's why the setbacks were different. And they were sold as one acre lots, and we couldn't fit the two acre setback. So I don't know. I don't know we're, what what we're zoning existed at the setback. time of whatever that one was this. May I? May I yeah, just, absolutely. I have the previous variance file from 1986, <laughs> and I have the meeting minutes. So um, right now, wishes to it was Baker. I'm not sure. Richard Baker. Yeah. All of this. So, oh, yes, that. Baker was the first person. Oh, perfect. So Baker was the first person who bought it. Yeah. Baker stepped forward and explained to the board that he wishes to put an addition onto his home and that he now has a side now has a side setback of forty feet, which is required by zoning. Right. Okay, that makes sense. By adding this addition it would bring his setback to twenty five feet from the property line. Because so, they added the garage on. Because so zoning was updated, and now you can't, you have to either meet, any new construction has got to meet zoning, or any existing construction that was within zoning is determined to be pre-existing, non-conforming, which if you suggest is, is considered so with, grandfathered. So, he so would, with, these, with our next door day, we're going up, and that's going to change everything? It, I mean, in this case, yeah, if, I mean, he's not if this were a special permit, yeah. then it would simply be a determination by the board whether or not the, the change that he's requesting is substantially more detrimental, but that's not what this is. He has an actual variance, yeah. and so what was allowed was exactly what's on the plan for the variance. Yeah. Now he wants to do something different. So he can't legally do that. He has to comply with this variance. The variance, which is a little harder to deal with than, than, than a special permit, this has to be, is that, you've looked at this. Yeah. My I do, and I, I still have another question about the garage. Okay, as far as because uh, I don't see any plans on you plan on cantilever building above the garage. Correct. And the cantilever is going in which direction? There will be no cantilever on the no garage. No cantilever. So, okay. but I think one of the things that it looks a little screwy right now. There's a garage, and then there's <coughs> a family room, and that's existing. Correct? correct. That's correct. So I think that's the 
so there already is a family room. So above. he's building a master above the existing family room, above the existing garage. And it's not to be cantilevered in any direction? No. So with the exception of we are cantilevering around the house, which currently meets the existing setbacks, yes. everything else is staying the same. Other than the elevation? Yes, except, except for going up. Correct. Hmm. So pre-existing, non-conforming, and if it's not, <laughs> not increasing the non-conformity in any way, and uh, you know, if the determination would be going up is not because it's airspace, right? Okay, if you can't leave it into the airspace, we, you know, that I would consider. I would think we would have to consider that is increasing the nonconformity. And I'm, you know, if anybody has a suggestion, that was or my question. If I'm so missing anything, let so me know. So if I stood at the edge of your garage, mm -hmm. you're going straight up and flush all the way across. Correct. There's not going to be a. Cantilever on that side that's already encroaching on that. In the front and in the back, you're going to have cantilevers, but you have plenty of space. Correct. And you have plenty of space on the other side, but that's not changing. Right. So, so the main portion of the house. But we have to modify it. This main portion here. Yeah. All falls outside of the existing setback. Right. We're dealing with the off the front, 18 off the back. Yeah. No cantilever here. No cantilever here. Yeah. On the front of the garage, we we're going to do a, a bump out with the window with the seat. But we have more than enough. 250 feet. So the front of the garage, you, you, what are you going to do? Add like a bay window with a bump out? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to cantilever out 12 inches. And then uh, carry that all the way to the front. And that would be in which direction? Bailey Lane. Bailey Lane. Facing Bailey Lane. So facing this way, the front. Yes, that's what that is. Yeah, right. no, I'm looking the garage at the is this way, where the okay. driveway is. Correct. Right there. Okay, and here, this is considered the side. Or not. That's see with these corner lots. That's where there's a lot of confusion as far as. That's where less. Where's the side? Where's the front? Because if there's a side, if this is if this is considered the front, then you're at 43 feet now, and you needed 50. So, I guess my question would be, the location of even still, it is a bump out. That's not that's increasing, even though it's a window. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there anything? Is it going down to the ground? No. Okay, so all you're doing is adding a bay window, for the most part. I mean, but when you say a bump out, you're not doing a dormer. Um, the intent was to have a, a gable at the top of the bump out. So the bump out, the bump out is eight feet. House, it's, it's twelve well, inches. It's coming off the garage. He's I believe he's talking about the back of the garage, the family room, off the garage. So he's saying it's twelve inches deep, but eight feet long. But on the front. The front, which is basically facing the back. Right, right? but that's not going to change any setbacks. Because the problem is the side setback. The problem yeah. is here. Let's see if the garage, if, if his bump out came in here, and he's at forty-three now. This is conceivably he could so this approach is on that. About. You know what I'm saying? The seven right. feet. You got six and change. Dave. The question is, does it on this line here? This is where the encroachment is, yep. right? Mm -hmm. The bump out's going to be over here. Yep. So he doesn't infringe on that 43. What is? He's already if he's 43 to here. Yep. And how many feet in is the bump out? That's what I'm stuffing. Yeah, trying to determine that's right the now. question, right? So right at the moment. Well, how many feet is First the... First uh, saying Heritage Way is the front. The garage is 15 feet wide. 15 feet wide. It's 8 feet in the middle. That leaves what? 4 feet. 4 feet. 4 feet either way from the oh, side. So 4 feet from center. So that wouldn't be an issue if that's... Exact. Okay, I don't have that. Yeah. Right. I don't have that. Ground. I don't have that plan, but you know. yeah, there's yeah. nothing about the bench. That would make sense. Three foot six, right here on the pivot. You look at these all day. <laughs> it's already, it's already existing. Yeah, right. it's so, right here. 
the, because it's a corner lot now. You need to meet. You need to meet, you need to meet the 50 feet. You were supposedly supposed to meet 50 feet all the way around. I agree that at this, at this time, when this was really done, that the, the requirement was 40 feet. Um, that gets to the existing non-conforming piece, but the reality was that the garage never met the original zoning to begin with, which is why the variance was required. Mm -hmm. It didn't even meet the 40 because it went to was it 25, right. it was 26. Up, 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 up. So the garage itself, regardless of what happened with this driveway, mm -hmm. whenever that happened, it was, was legally built with this variance, right. assuming mm -hmm. that it was built to these plans, and these there is no plans. There's a simple little plot plan here. And give it the benefit of the doubt that what's on this plot plan, other than maybe the deck, which we haven't talked about yet, but this this meets it. I mean, this is the same. Yes. So the question is, can you go up without? And I think what Dave was getting at is, well, now you, there's a potential that you're building something outside the footprint, which may be within the 50 feet that's required under current. And if these are under accurate, current zoning code. Correct. And that's, I guess, I mean, you have to. If, if that bump out is within seven feet of the corner, then he's right. That's I mean, right. You're you're exactly. you're actually increasing, technically increasing the the footprint. The reality is that going up or increasing the footprint, there is no footprint rule really. I mean, this has been going on for years and years. I mean, if you change, that's why if you if you want to do anything outside this variance, it requires a rewrite of the variance, and then the nonconformity, whatever that may be, can be determined by the board whether you're you're going outside the footprint, whether you're going up, whether you're going down. I mean, the the, the detriment could be, you know, somebody's view. In which case, going up can absolutely make a big difference. In this case, maybe it doesn't. The neighbors don't seem to be concerned about that. If you're on a be beachfront property and somebody behind you has a nice view of the pond or the lake or the ocean and you want to do a second story and you've got to come here, everyone's going to say, hey, you're ruining my view. That's the most popular concern with, with going up. And you're going up inside, so I'm just kind of throwing out there why, why this has to come to the board. I'm not suggesting that this is something that no, is inappropriate. I'm just saying that that's that, that's what we have to deal with. But uh, because it's not pre-existing non-conforming, we kind of don't have to go through the iteration of you know uh, the the step-by-step -step process of this of the special permit rule. It's really is there something about the lot? That necessitates this, but by virtue of the fact that this decision has already been written, right. it sort of carries forward right. as far as meeting that. I would think so. I mean, I don't know if you guys have comments on that. Throwing, I mean, at this it. point, what we're faced with is justifying a variance <coughs> or a modification of the variance, and that requires the um, you know, satisfaction of the um, you know the threshold of, of something about the lot. <coughs> get into all that I guess we want but, <laughs> I, I don't but that may be to, maybe taken, care of, taken yeah. care of by that we're just modifying what that variance granted yeah by the hardship story. was determined by a previous yeah. board yeah. at least that's my my take of it was the deck there when you bought it it was I actually brought pictures from uh, do you happen to know when the deck was built yeah it was before my time here. Um, well, you're new, four years, right? <laughs> so I have a photo from the listing that actually has a date stamp on it. There's a there's a black and white one there that is horrendous that you really can't even see the deck, right? Can you see the date on that black and white photo on the bottom right of the corner? <coughs> Any chance? 8-18-2011. Okay, so this is, I just want to pass this around. This is the this is the deck. Uh, it hasn't been changed other than I slapped a coat of paint on it. Uh, and this is actually from the side as well. <coughs> we have to mark these up as exhibits. Well, no, we have to plan the applicants to get into the record. Yeah, now, where are these from, John? These are from your realtor? Uh, no, the one that's black and white that I submitted with the application was from the realtor ad. These here I took uh, 
the other day oh. just to bring this. Uh, this way? It's only 23. No. no. <coughs> so we knew it was at least there since 2011. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we... Right, wish we which had, doesn't help. No, I wish we had another date. The reason why we're trying to figure out the date is if it's been there for 10 or more years, mm -hmm. there's a theory that it's grandfathered in, use your words, <laughs> and then maybe it's not as big of a deal. Yes, the, um, when I was talking with Les, he went to go find a permit for it. There was never a permit pulled for the deck. Yeah. Or, you know, perhaps it was misfiled. Mm. And then turn over a different building inspectors and stuff. So I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt here. Possible. You know? <laughs> uh, because we can't, you know, we could go out and prove whether or not it's been there for 10, 15 years. And we're not going to do that. Did he inspect it when he was out there? Les has never actually come out to the house. More than willing to. Really? Do any of the neighbors know if when the deck went in by any chance? I'm guessing, I'm guessing because I don't think the last people that owned that house did anything to that house. Okay. Uh, there was a people, was it Marsha? Yeah, Marsha. Marsha. Marsha mm -hmm. Yeah, she's the only one that did anything to that house. And what and year did she move out? We bought it from Marsha. Okay. What year? 2012, January 2012. Yeah. That's the problem, is we don't. Right. And, that, who, and how yeah. long did Marsha live there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shot in the dark. I could, I could look. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Hold on. Hold on. Marsha. 87. Yeah. She, she, she bought it in 87. That's what you would look at, right? Yeah. Right. So she. She built it between 87 and 2012. The previous, owner, the previous owner built the deck, I think. The right. question is, when did they build it? It was, I mean, technically it was built illegally if there was no permit pulled. You guys can't talk at the same the, time. The, the code says that if, if, an illegal, if a structure is built, illegally built, then within 10 years you can't appeal to have it removed. So basically it becomes grandfathered after 10 years, technically. That's just the way, that's just what the law says, okay? If you came in here and it was built three years ago, then, you know, you could appeal to have it inspected and proved. But the problem is now it encroaches on the setback and it was built without a permit and it would have required a variance at that time had someone <coughs> gone through the proper channels to have it. That, that's why we're kind of just trying to figure this out. But um, my question of whether or not it was inspected or if he, he went to the site was because if it, if it was not, I mean, I, I'd be curious to know whether he has any issues with how it was built. You know, the deck is a pretty easy thing to inspect. The decking um, code has changed dramatically in the last three years, okay? There's a new code for decks, prescriptive deck code, okay? And uh, all the decks, almost everybody knows, don't meet the new code today. Mm -hmm. And that's a, as of three years ago. You know, it's six by sixes, okay, for your post. And no, four by fours are no longer allowed. So if this was a permit job, you know, within three years, <laughs> inspected, it's six by sixes. It's got to be lagged to the house. It's got to have diagonal bracing. There's a lot of different things, so you can tell if it's a, you know if it's fairly recent construction, if it was permitted, and you know if you know if Les were to go out and inspect it, what's he inspecting? He's inspecting something that he doesn't know how long it was there. Right. You know what I mean? He's not going to do concrete testing or anything. I mean, it's 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 existing, and as far as I'm concerned, it's existing. I don't have an issue with the deck. If you try to expand the deck. You'd need to come back, okay, for a variance. Yep. Okay, but I, I'm not sure we need to go much further on the deck. I do have another question going back to his bump out, however, because, <laughs> <laughs> well, anything that projects, a, you know, into the space um, that infringes on a setback, it's always been my understanding, you know, that that could be. And the gray area there is it doesn't go to the ground. Are you talking about in the front of the garage? Yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, because I, you know, I know like a, you know, if, we, if somebody would have, you want to put a little portico on the front of your house, okay, and you don't meet the setback, you can't do it. Because it, it once it's attached to the house, now you can build a deck anywhere you want and don't attach it to the house. You don't, you're not required to meet setbacks, but you know, 
something attached to the house as a permanent fixture is considered part of that part of the house's footprint. For this line. Yes. So I do have a question though. On A1, it says existing first floor plan. Is that bump out existing or are you adding that? No, that is going to be added. Okay. So there's confusion on that on that drawing. Well, it, it just says, says existing. existing. Yeah, it existing. should just be a little spot that says to be added. But. Right. Just oh. The dash line. Spaces in. Yeah. Whoever you're. Yeah. John's drafting. So that's kind of a gray area too, though, as far as you know. I'll be honest. I mean, it, on, on, in this case. On that issue, it's already all non-conforming. There's nothing that says you have to stay within the, the footprint. That's just an interpretation. What it says is you can't intensify the non-conforming nature for a special permit. Or if you're asking for a variance, desirable relief may be granted without substantially derogating from the intent and purpose of the zoning ordinance or bylaw. That's all it says. So by going up, one could easily say, my understanding was you can't go up either, or you can't go up. It, you're you're right. A a a setback encroachment would trigger could trigger a variance. Right. right. But he's already here for a variance. He already has one on the right. whole thing. So the I question agree. to me is, and this is all interpretation. So the question to me is, does what he wants to do now, is that more detrimental, or right. does it substantially derogate from the uh, the uh, the the intent of the bylaw more so than what's already there that's that he already is available. And, and my biggest, and, and it can be a yes my or biggest no concern or. was are we increasing the nonconformity? And I don't see that. I think he absolutely is, by virtue of the fact that he's almost doubling the amount of square feet. Now, is that bad? Well, I'm, when, is I, it, when I talk that doesn't mean I'm not in favor of it, but I, I think that the not there's a substantial amount of additional living space now that is going to be built inside. <coughs> The, the setback, whether call it up, call it out, call it whatever you want. I mean, that's just an interpretation. Mm. That doesn't mean I'm not in favor of it or that I, I think that it's substantially, you know, uh, more detrimental than the existing nonconformity. In, in fact, I think in a lot of cases, and this one perhaps, it's a nice upgrade. Mm -hmm. Oh, I agree. I agree. And my, my, you know, my interpretation I mean is that if, you, if, if you're going up and you're not increasing the footprint, you're not increasing the nonconformity. So we can choose to disagree on that one. Because I've dealt but with. I think it. at the end we could probably agree that this is probably an okay project. It is. I've dealt, <laughs> with it. I've dealt with it several times, Jeff, and also in surrounding towns. But I, okay, if I go out, go if I go out a couple inches, plan. absolutely, got to change your plans. Okay, if I go straight up, you know, somebody would be have to be hard pressed, and it would have to be in their bylaws because it's not in the state codes. As far as anything about increasing Absolutely. the nonconformity, I guess the question is: the Is it more detrimental about, about making it bigger? If right. he, here's how I feel That's about it, I guess I agree with Jeff. There is substantial living space, but I also agree with you. If he was coming out 13 feet to the outside the garage, and we would have an issue, mm -hmm. but because he's going up, it's less detrimental. And we, the other thing I always look at is not that this is the deciding factor but I always like to hear from the neighbors because like Jeff said if you're living next to the water you know you'd have people lined up to say my view my this my that my sunrise my sunset I don't think it's in, gonna in, you know, really detrimentally well oh, I think it actually adds substantial interest for the neighbors because now they look going from a one-story cottage to you a know a nice long. looking colonial modern house so I, I think it's it's actually added, adding value to the neighborhood. The only question I would have is the bump out. And because the bump out doesn't go to the ground, I tend to lean towards what you said. Because, you know, I do this all day and guys groan and moan about, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. Cause, and mm -hmm. this is exactly what it is. If, it, if that went all the way to the ground, if he was doing away with the garage and it was a fireplace or something like that. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. No. Nope. Is that creating potentially a new nonconformity or expanding the existing non? The bump out? Yeah. It's expanding the existing. I think it's. I, mean, that's, I don't, I'm not, that's a serious question because you got no, two different lot lines they're here. They're already it's, forty. They're already at forty-three, and they're already under the fifty required. So they're. It, but you're, you're suggesting the bump out is is, you're you're dealing with the same nonconformity though, right? It's the same nonconformity. Even with or without the bump out. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Because it's three and a half feet. Because so that can trigger something too. Sometimes you know, oh, you're creating a new one that way. Well, not you know. Sometimes but, that can cause not, problems. But he's already not. at 43. 
Well, it's like somebody who, you know, you know, you have your, your front set back and you say, well, you know what, I've got all double hung windows, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a bay window in. And it what okay, approaches basically. on the front set back or something because the house but is set the, too close? Is that why? Is that what you're saying? The interpretation is not that it's it's because of its foot its footprint, even though it is a window. And for the most part, like you know, most of the houses around here, I mean, it's it's still in the, under the eave, but it's the, where it doesn't go to the ground. I, I don't have an issue with it. All right, so let's move on. <laughs> well, well, I, I mean, we can. I don't. I'm still not sure how to deal with it. Have an issue with it. You, 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 he's asking for a variance for the deck as well. I mean, there's two variances in play here, so we can't just yeah. ignore uh, well, the deck and not talk about it anymore. Should he's we move on from the house to yes, the deck? Yes, that's what I'm saying. I yeah, and I think that just briefly on that that whole uh, existing nonconformity or whatever we're talking about, whether he's going straight up or going out or whatever, I think it, it's again left le up to the board to decide this sort of nuance of whether it is substantially detrimental to the public and that's the difference between what he's doing and what someone does when they are blocking someone's view to the ocean. Right. So in this case it's clearly not detrimental. In this case, case there's already an existing variance that's been granted. We're just modifying an existing variance my, my, and we don't even need to get into whether they should have granted that variance in the first place. Because it Weird years ago was much more complex. People were granting variances like special permits, and it, it really shouldn't be working that way. They probably should not have granted the existing, the the current variance. Seems that, but have grant they have, and and you are making your property better for everybody. So, in that case, I, I can I can see how that it, it, they allow the board to some leeway here to. To make a decision for the town, what what is best for the town ultimately is what we're trying to do within the law because someone could um, try to overturn this. We always try to do things legally so that we can defend it, basically. So I have a question on whether the deck is actually an exist a second nonconformity, I guess, or if it's the same. <clears throat> it's, I feel like it's almost the same issue because it's 23 feet. Granted, it wasn't part of this original variance, so maybe that's why it's second. It's the second one, but it's not. It's the same setback. Oh well. So it's it's, yeah. it's a, expanding the existing nonconformity. If it were being built today, right, it would be increasing right. the nonconformity and, and, and would require us would require a variance for sure well but, we'll, oh, I'm sorry, but because we're already it's already an existing nonconformity on the setback is it the setback or is it the structure that causes it you know what i mean because we're already he's already we're getting the variance for the this one i wouldn't say it's a structure because that deck you know the deck could have been put on any part of the house that where it was in conformity right the, deck is, the deck's existing <laughs> and i can't I challenge that for, for what I it's worth let's have. let's go in the wayback machine pretend that we're granting a variance for the deck and the garage because they probably would have done that well the, re the reality oh sorry the reality is we're right we're, they would have if so they came the with one the time with the garage and the deck they would have granted oh, the everything. They hit this one, sure. I, it, yeah, they probably I no, of course they would. Of course they would. Yeah, it yeah. would have been fine. They would have been, yeah, fine. If they're granting variances like that, they would have added deck to it, sure. Yeah. Jeff, you mentioned something about, and I don't know the law well enough, but you said 10 years, it's like almost like a statute of limitations mm -hmm. of, right. of preclusive effect from, from being able to um, go against it. it. Could the board make a finding based upon... <laughs> You know, the, the limited uh, <coughs> testimony, if you will, from the audience and, and what we've seen from the uh, respect to when the previous owners built it. Could we make a finding that it's 10 years and would it just be a non-issue? I don't know that we really need to. What I was going to say is <coughs> we have to grant <coughs> a modification to the existing variance, which is really a new variance in reality. Are we going to write a whole new, someone's going to write a whole new decision. It's going to explain what we talked about tonight. And it's going to include the plane to be built per the plan submitted. Right. The deck is on the plans per submitted. Mm -hmm. This nothing is going to happen with this original variance, wherever it is in here. Okay. This stays file. on the books. It stays in the file. It stays permanent. And then this is a modification to that 
the findings that need to be made in whatever it is that we decide as a board is reasonable for him to build, and whether we do that tonight or whenever, it's fine, then we need to find that in granting this modification that there are unique circumstances relative to soil conditions, blah, blah, blah. How do you do that? Hasn't really argued that. Actually, his application does argue it, but you could, as Paul mentioned, say that because this was already found in the previous one. Yeah, yeah so we're let's not move on. Yeah. I mean, you can do that. that. The literal enforcement of the bylaw would involve substantial hardship, financial, otherwise. We need to kind of explain that a little bit. He's done some of that in his application. Mm -hmm. Some of that may have been found in the other variants as well. And then I think the biggest one for tonight is that desirable relief can be granted without substantially derogating from the intent and purpose of the zoning ordinance or bylaw, yeah. which is some of the stuff that we're talking about, the specifics mm -hmm. with setbacks, going up, getting bigger, whatever it is. And, and so to me, it's kind of like, that's why I don't mean to be harping on the merits of the project. I'm trying to, I was trying to figure out early on, what is the real nonconformity? What are we dealing with? It? I think there were several things in play. This is now considered a, a corner lot. So now instead of 40, it's really 50. So I think we need to in, in capture all that stuff and whatever it is we decide to clean it all up, right? So, you know, 50 feet is required now, for example. I'm not, I may not even be correct in saying that, but I think that's what we're talking about. Yes. This is yeah. now a corner lot. <clears throat> 50 feet is required yeah. from here, from there. Doesn't meet it, okay? Um, whatever other, is, if it's a conforming lot or I, this is now, it is, has always been a conforming lot, I believe. So you've got 80,000 square feet, right? Which is what's required to, you know, that kind of stuff. So as Paul said, we just got to try to do this correctly and legally so that there isn't any question and then substantiate it. So I don't know. So, I'm, I, I'm babbling I, on, but I think no, the no, no, I think it be included in plans. the no. decision that it's going to meet the plans. No. You've submitted plans. If we have comments on the plans, as Davis suggested, maybe the bump out causes issues. You can talk, whatever. I mean, and well, that's no, kind of what maybe, I was alluding maybe to. Everybody's we don't need happy a separate it. variance. It can be encompassed under yeah, this. I mean, I, yeah, I've gone full circle, I guess, in saying that there's two, but the, mm -hmm. the, um, the legal ad implies that you need two. Your application is say you need another, but yeah, I think it can be all encompassed in, in one modification. I am not writing that. <laughs> <laughs> do we have time? Do we have to do it right now? Well, the decision yeah, doesn't have to be written tonight, but you don't have to even make a motion tonight if you don't want to. But no, no, I don't, I don't, or I don't mind. Else. It's just, I mean, it's it can if be, we're, so we're going to quote unquote later, clear it up, I that mean, sounds. Meet in August. <laughs> no, <laughs> it, no, no, I have no problem <laughs> voting on it. I just, uh, the clearing up sounds like we we do need to be definitive about the setback <laughs> issues. If you want to just, if you want to um, explain the fact, I don't even know that it's because it's a corner lot, it's a 50 foot setback anymore. I think that is the setback. Whether well, I think it was originally 40 back in But it had nothing to do with, or I think they just increased that, but it had nothing to do with the fact that it's a corner lot. No, it well, it does. Sorry. Well, because it fell within the range before, and now For, it does 40 is side. It's now, it still is. 40 feet is required on the side. What he's saying is this is actually a corner lot. At what point it became a corner lot, I don't know. But now, Les's interpretation is, because it's a corner lot, you need you need 50 from right. both, and it both was, corners. And it was, right, I, I That's what he's yeah. saying. So 50 has never come into play before yeah. tonight. Yeah. But it's sort of the same thing. I like, think. Mm -hmm. Is that your? That's a, is that right? I, I've, I've sat with mm -hmm. last probably about a dozen times since we initiated this, and he kept explaining and explaining. Finally, the light dawns on Marblehead about mm -hmm. the driveway mm -hmm. becoming a private way to grant them the frontage, which makes my lot a corner lot. Theirs is now a street along with Bailey Lane, which requires the 50. Oh, because they had to need the, f the frontage, so that that by definition re makes you a corner lot, right? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so at that point, did he explain that that's why you need now 50 feet from versus that? the 40? Okay, exactly. so that seems to be consistent with it. But it doesn't really matter that he needs 50 because he's already not oh. conforming at 40. Correct. Well, I guess it does for this whole bump out issue because now, well, not really. It's seven feet. I was going to say it, may, it encroaches on like half the garage now, but I guess you know that's. Irrelevant. I mean, right. it's a moot point. It's still, so it's still at, the same yeah. nonconformity. It, yeah. was, it could, was in the variance. That I'm was not sure approved. how we should address the issue with the deck, because I, you know, I don't, I don't know that I could comfortably say, you know, okay, it, we're granting it. It was, it was pre-existing nonconforming. I, I almost wish the deck wasn't there. Of course. Okay. I mean, because I don't have have a good feeling on how I can say, yeah, okay, yeah, it's grandfathered or. It was there originally, or somebody built it five years ago. I don't know. I just, I just wish the deck was never there. 
Or if there was a permit for it. And well, if there was a permit, it would have been yeah. worse. Much better, absolutely. I was kind of getting at, is there some way that we can at least, no, you know, have have that be part of the construction review since it was never a permit pulled for it, have them at least deem it safe, you know, whatever, I'm not saying it's unsafe, but I don't know. I, I don't know that. There's a lot of tree uh, houses out there that are built. Right? I don't know that no, there's a way for us to. Yeah. To, you know, put that as a condition, Jeff, because that may entail that this whole deck's got to be ripped down, and now he's got to build he's it new again. And now he's well, back. He that's yeah. just he's got to inspect yeah, the current code. You know yeah, exactly. That's got to be uh, well. That's that's a given. So it, one of the conditions will have to be that it need that that existing structure that has not been inspected needs to be inspected. And Dave's point is, it's he would then inspect it to current but code, not to current and essentially code. required it. To okay, if I want to say, all right, prior to prescriptive deck codes. Well, no, that's something Les could do. He's got, you know, he's hiring uh, a contractor who's going to have an unrestricted construction license, I assume. Right? That's me. Do you have a license? CSL? Yes. Unrestricted. Correct. You can't do your own. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just let you know. But, I mean, you know, is it a 4x4? Four 4x4? By four? Four by four? Right oh. now, the post, yeah, 4x4. Four four. Okay, so you know what? It's not going to meet today's code. End of story. Right, nope. so what happens then? No, so, one, no one my deck or your deck or anybody else is in town because 99% well, yep. of them have been built before three years ago. Right, but, by, but to Paul's point, but to put it in the, as a condition that needs to be inspected, he's not going to inspect it to 10 years ago code. Well, you could, today's we code, and we put it in there as a condition, he's going to say, well, I get a condition. I inspect it, doesn't meet it, you got to tear it down. That's what's going to happen. No. Now. I think if we put I something agree. in there specifically, well, the requiring him to, to, to look at it. It could be, you know. So. I don't even know if we that. can condition that. It could be, you know, should, can we say it's conditioned upon a safety inspection, okay, by a third party, okay? I mean, basically a lot of times now insurance companies are coming out and this, they're, they're even stricter than uh, the building codes. Don't they, either needs to be idea. a permit pulled on that, whether it was done whenever. I mean, I, I you, you I can't can pull a permit that. retro on yeah. something that doesn't meet no. today's codes. How do you do that, Paul? I know, I know. Well, I'm oh, suggesting it may need to be. You, do we beat you beef it up then? Are you ever going to redo the deck to that square footage the same? If, if, if it required personally the way it's built right now, I wouldn't have built it that way. Right. So <laughs> you don't mind if if we said that uh, that deck can stay where it is? We'll grant that will be part of the the, the modified var uh, variance, uh, but it does need to be inspected. And a proper permit needs to be pulled for that as well. You can't really continue without a. No, if, if 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 it's required, yeah. then that's yeah, no yeah. problem at all. To rebuild I, it, you mean? No. That's no problem. Yeah, Do you mind I, rebuilding I, it? No. Because we can issue a, a permit. I mean, I think that makes things a little bit easier. Condition. Yeah. Condition that the deck be rebuilt and inspected along with the addition. Well, Maybe. not necessarily. I mean, and not to just cost you money, well, but that's, that's what you may mean. redesign it a bit, too. Is I it pressure treated? It is. Okay. It may not need to be rebuilt. We just, we don't, obviously you're suggesting it would be, but we don't know whether things can be sistered up and posts can be Is it flash whatever. to the house? Uh, judging by the looks of it, probably not. Probably the same guy that built the one that I have. <laughs> <laughs> so part, part of the, you know what happens a lot, a lot of those, they call them a builder's deck. They throw them on last minute, <coughs> short money, the footings are 18 inches instead of four feet. There's never a permit involved. I've replaced probably yeah. 50 of those in the last ten years. If we're going to tie that into the that variance can. modification, it has to be inspected I, to to this code because everything is going to be everything you're doing is going to be a code the, the the addition everything. I don't want to speak for you, but my hunch is that if you're going to do this, you were probably going to do the deck to begin with well, at some point. Um, or you were going to no, address the no deck? because after after all this uh, the the variance and the setbacks came to light. Yeah, I was going to let everything play out if. You don't want to and touch it because it's non-conforming. You right. don't want it to cause a problem. So I was I'm leaving everything until after this is over. Let me ask you a question. I, not to interrupt you, but I mean, <laughs> nope, if you if you had carte blanche within sort of this area, would you incorporate that into a, a new deck into the design of your addition? Would you be well, interested in doing that and submitting a modification that might be even better than what you were asking for that kind of handles all this? Is for the deck Take, portion yeah. itself? Yeah, the deck. to include the, the deck, deck as part of the project that you, you know, it's kind of what we just talked about. Sure. Yeah. All right, listen. As long as the footprint. This, even though the footprint's the same, once you rip a deck down, okay, uh, 
most so likely you're going to need a new permit and you conceivably he's going to have to come back in front of us again because okay. he's he's ripped it up he's ripped it down and he's rebuilding it you know no but what i'm suggesting is he go back and modify these plans to show the new deck that he wants to include with this project and we give him a, a bit the variance for the whole thing so including a new deck that is all part of the same setback that gina's talking about it's all the same thing the bump out this it's all dealing with the same setback requirement that we're trying to handle here right. and clean it all up the deck was built without a permit you know shame on whoever built it for not going through the proper channels but we have no history on it so we're asked to either provide forgiveness after the fact for something that we don't really know anything about or you know maybe you say look i'm willing to incorporate this into the project and i'll do it right and we'll all know it's right and you'll provide us with a plan I, you know I, i'm just throwing an option out. we have you to may say any parameters on the size of the deck or anything like oh, that maybe, or no. just, the size of the Stick deck the we, setback we, we, we absolutely the can't can cannot increase it by an inch okay it's already non-conforming and you know i mean if if so, if if you really wanted to play the game it's going to be six inches smaller i'm decreasing the non-conformity i don't need to go to a board no, but he's here. I know he's already he's asking here now. for a variance. A variance you can do anything the, you want. Which is the board which agrees septic. to. Uh, septic is. You see what I'm saying, Dave? Yeah. Though I mean, he's. I'm not suggesting we grant something. Comes out to a diverter box. I get. Well, okay. Here's so it's here's your tank. Here's digging's your not going to be a problem for the deck if you have to if dig new. Okay. So the deck is part of the assessor's tax card. Yeah. Oh yeah. How long is that? Yeah. No, it's just, well, do, I'm just, just wondering what they saw the when they went out there. It's not one. Yeah, it's an open discussion, I believe. Are we in discussion right now? Sort yeah. of. Yeah, we're in discussion. Yeah. So, um, are, are, we re are you required to react to the deck because it was part of the original request? application? For, uh, the or can you, just, can you just grant the variance for the riser you know for the second Edition. floor that's and a sort confusion of i don't know that we can do that and and denial in any yeah. application but can you just ignore that part of it or you is that not allowed withdraw it mm. if you could withdraw it that you would be that would have of, you can withdraw part of an application so it's basically a non-issue because it's not really any longer part of this variance request it's still de facto not permitted not Permitted, but we're not. This board is not addressing that. They're simply addressing the second. Well, floor. yeah, it was. It was probably recommended by the building inspector to get that get that deck dealt with at the same time. And I'm I'm we asking, do we have to, or could we just sort of deal with that part of it? And you don't have to, but I think you know, not reason not to. Jeff said, if you're I mean, going to correct well. all the wrongs that have been done and make them all right. Yeah, but you know, that's like that's just. I mean, I if, get it. If, if 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 people had all the money in the world and all the time in the world, that would be wonderful. Right. But maybe the more pragmatic thing is to think about it as let's deal with this and then at some other point. Well, you, so you got to justify the variance for the deck now. You, gotta you, gotta you don't want to incorporate it into this really? or, or or yeah. withdraw it. But now it's been identified three. as an illegal structure. So now the building inspector, what do you want him to do? We want the building inspector. He's identified this as requiring a variance. So what would you do? Like a cease and desist? You have to rip it down. Yeah. Is that what he would he be obligated to do that if there's no deck complaint? doesn't? Well, it'd create a whole See, wall. Of ad walls. Adding a deck does not meet the criteria for a variance. Okay, so if, if you know, bottom line is if he, you know if there was no deck and he came to us now, he doesn't meet he doesn't meet the hardship requirements, the topography or anything. Did less, and this is something we don't know. Did less say. You need to get this squared away with zoning. And you, and you put it on our plate because there's no permit. He identified it as a non-conformity that required a variance. But he says in the denial. Yeah. Well, the need denial variance right for the deck. Yep. Yeah, he's brought it to light. Yeah, here. right. You know. On the first page of the That's denial. True. And therefore, we're required to address it. Is that true? Yes. yes. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, we we have the authority to mm -hmm. grant a variance or modification to one with whatever conditions yes. we like we could condition yes this is fine condition you tear that deck down i mean you or you say i don't like that you know, you, and then you don't get the whole variant i mean we can i was just throwing that out there to yeah i mean try and think yeah. about all the options <laughs> can you at, sort of ignore it without requiring him to tear it down? it's just sort of it, like as, a non 
I, I think it's Jeff saying it. We have sort of the obligation to try to clean okay. up the loose ends, and, and that's what we're always going to do. And that's why we're. That's why there's such a lengthy conversation here because it's going to come up again, yeah. and it's going to be slightly different situation than yours. And we have to be so definitive about these things so that, again, it's defendable. And and when someone wants to do something that we think is offensive, we need to be able to find reasons why they can't do it, whereas you can do it. So, or why, you know, what's the difference between his and ours? Well, because of this, and they granted a variance and, you know, the whole deck thing. So what you're getting at is, uh, based upon the fact that a variance has already been granted, if you... Yes, could we modify the variance with the new deck on it and just be done with that then? Yeah. I'm not saying essentially if if you want to do a new deck, then essentially we're not going to deal with the variance on that one. It's going to come down. Right. He's given us plans that include going up on the garage and a new deck, all of which deals with the same nonconformity, and we modify the variance with Good. these findings that it's not substantially more, it, uh, excuse me, not substantially more detrimental, but the... Um, uh, Relief can be granted without substantially derogating. You got to get to that point, and it's a yep. set of plans. It says, "Here's what I'm going to do," and we all agree to that, whatever that is, and it may include a deck, um, <coughs> and it gets rebuilt. If, if I, I'm not saying we, I don't know that we can't work around it some other way, but my, I guess my question to you was, if, if you have any interest in rebuilding that deck, maybe in some other way that doesn't get closer, or maybe even gets a little further away, and you would have incorporated it had you given permission, or that. You know, you had plenty of setback to work with. I would have. I would. Would you, have would you do that? Oh, absolutely. I would do that. Okay. My wife had also uh, brought up because she's not a fan of the deck about putting a patio there. I don't know if the pad. I, and that's completely different. Yeah, you don't. You're not about. even a patio yeah, would not. Patios. You don't even need a permit for that. Yeah. Well, okay. Which would be nice. And that, that's exactly what I was thinking. However. Uh, yeah. That's not a struggle. A patio is not a struggle. <laughs> I, I, hate, I hate when she's right, but I, well, you know what you would do is you could uh, modify your deck size to something smaller, so you had a decent size landing out, out of wood. Then you went down onto a patio, so you may you keep a deck, but it's just a lot smaller. Right. Um, that would be great. The problem then, is now that we're dealing with fifty feet. So right. well, yes. I know. And, and, and if you do, if we don't address this tonight, whatever it, it is you want to rebuild is going to be it's going to go right through your. I don't oh, think absolutely. there's going to be from any the, room from left. That back corner, yeah. And that's what I was just going to jump yeah, in. It needs to sort guys, of be addressed as part of this. Because otherwise, his deck is gone. Is, right? It's on the other side of your house, so I think we have to address the deck in this modification. Yes. I don't think it needs a right. second variance. I think we just address the deck, let him decide if he wants to take it down. And or, he can always make or, it. Do something different. Do you did because uh, he's in the setback. If he decides to take it down and get and get a permit to make a smaller deck, his deck is going to be on the other side of the be, house. Yeah, the fifty. It's going to be fifty feet now, so it, into the it's only portion. twenty. I don't know where the other oh, twenty-five oh, oh, is going to be. Oh, but yeah, you're thinking. Well, I was just saying. Conform. Whatever he does, so it can't he conform. can't really do another deck at all if we don't address it in this variance. Right, right. No, I think we need to approve at least what he's got there. I think we approve variance. what he's got, and then if he wants to get rid of it, he can get rid of it. And if he's got, if he wants to change it, then it's a different story. If and you he, want to build a different deck, you're going to have to come back to us. Yes. Well, it, 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 so if he wants to make it smaller, would we grant the variance again? No, if he wants uh, to yet make a modification it smaller, to the modification. Well, if he wants to get rid of it or make it smaller, then it, it's that's not. Does he he's got to be mean, back to decreasing the nonconformity. Usually, it's to the plan submitted. Right. That's the easiest way to do right. it. We can write all this stuff. That you're allowed to do this, but no further. Do we have measurements on the deck? Which means right we now? need we would need some new plans. Yeah, and, and it might oh. be worth it to. I mean, are you in a real rush to get moving on this, or no. what, what's going to happen? Is, <laughs> but my feeling we always is, are right. My, my feeling is, <laughs> if it does get granted, and you guys allow me to do this, we're going to get a month worth of rain, and I can't cut my roof off. Yeah. But so. I'm wondering if you wouldn't be interested in throwing it out there that you, you modify what you have and we just continue this or something. It's an option. I don't know if you'd be be like to just kind of move on, but <coughs> give you some time to, to maybe present something that's a little different that gives you exactly what you wanted to begin with. Yeah, but that means this it delays you at least, well, we'll August Two months. Now. It's going to be August well, before guys we won't meet be here again. in August. Yeah. No, I mean, excuse me, September. It would be two months. Yes. Yeah, so. 
then he's yeah. getting tight. That would be if you want to modify the existing deck, deck into something else that is e that size or smaller. Uh, no, if he takes the deck down, do we care? Like that's no, 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 we don't no. care. So if that's he what I mean. Moves let's it all together. If he do replaces it, we do. Right. Yeah. If he builds any structure that's inside of fifty feet, now yeah. in the future he's got to come yeah, back. Yeah, but that's but that's not, that's still not approving what we have already drawn. That's why I'm so saying like if he decides he wants to build a new deck, it's going to be over over here anyway, so it'll be permittable. So if you, so con say if he you condition what he has here, you grant him the variance for the deck. Conditioned upon it meeting today's code, would that work? And then he can be done today, and you can choose to tear it down. The, the bottom line is you're either going to tear it down or you're going to replace it with something to code. Yeah, that's true. Exactly I mean, what's here. Though. I don't think require re we, the deck be fine. rebuilt. Bring it up to code. Removed and rebuilt. Yeah. And then you rebuilt. Well, and then it's part of the same variance. It'd be rebuilt not outside the existing footprint, I, not to exceed existing footprint. I don't like say, that. I don't think we even say built to existing Dave, code. You I mean, you're going to tell moving. somebody <laughs> to go make their house to the existing code. You can't make somebody make something that's that the existing to the existing No, no, I'm saying he has to tear it down because it's, we don't. But he's, he's allowed agreed. to build. Otherwise, replacement. we have to deal with it. And we don't want to deal with it. Rips it down. If he, rip, if he rips it down, everything's removed. It then it has to meet legally, and we're asking for the fault. setbacks, or we need variance. Right. Which is okay. what, which is what uh, we're going to we provide him with one shot. through this. That's what I'm wondering. So we either like grant him a variance to replace the deck as well. Exactly. Okay. So if he wants to rip it down, or if he wants to leave it in place, to whenever, that's fine. Yeah, and, and then the only time he would have to come back. All this, these actually, other things, I, ju I just don't see how that's feasible. <laughs> I mean, if you put the lead having he, him come he, he to get the patio. Patio. Hold on a second. He brought up the patio. So if he went with patio and just did stairs off of his and house. And a landing. And a landing. I don't. Still has to meet we're, setbacks. If he rips everything no. down, because he's still going to require footings, it still has to meet setbacks. We need to approve what's on the plan. I think we, we stop talking about if, that, when, how. We have to either approve what's on the plan or not approve what's on the plan. And don't require him to fix things that were built before his time because if I went into any of your houses, none of them would be to code, and I'm not going to tell you to fix them, bring them to code, because codes change. So I feel like we approve what's on the plan, one modification, and then if he wants to do something with his deck later, making it bigger, he's going to come back to us. If he wants to get We're rid of it, variance again. You start but if he no, he, it's a oh, modification. Shit. If he wants to get rid of the deck, then it doesn't affect us. That's my opinion. <laughs> I would agree. I, well, I have I have trouble with the deck, but I mean we can. I don't know. I I agree if, if it can be encapsulated in a. But now you got to keep it. I mean, what do we? So what's the variance say? It, no. what's, it, what's the variance going to say then? Yeah. Yeah, but build the plans or now? I mean, I. As submitted. It's, it's approved of the as too. submitted. Right now it's approved as submitted. If any changes, taking down a deck shouldn't be a change. He's not increasing any problems if he takes it Correct. down. Yeah. So if he wants to make it bigger, he's going to come back. And if he wants to put it over here, he's got to come back. If it's permittable and he puts it over here, then who cares? You know what I mean? It's He can demo it if he wants, but we have to approve what's submitted today. I, I agree that we either have to approve what's submitted or not. Or he submits yes. something that's what he actually wants. It's to his benefit as an option, and then we approve what's submitted at that point. And it's actually it's actually more closely relates what you actually would like to do. He has he doesn't want to touch this because he's afraid of the, the whole this point moving. Well, and time course, frame. And, and so, the, but the time frame's an issue. When if you he may comes back in September, uh, yeah. uh, he, he, he could he year. could he could pray yeah. <laughs> that he could break ground mid. -up. It, you know, late October. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it's fair. I mean, well, what would you prefer? I guess. Don't leave, leave it up to him if you. <laughs> <laughs> leave existing, and if I decide to tear it down, then we'll just get rid of it altogether. <clears throat> fair enough. So let's say I'm waiting for him to look to look at, for his wife. I know. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't want it anymore. No, she she took the little one downstairs because the little one was yapping. So. Uh -oh. <laughs> I don't have a problem, you know, as Gina suggested and what John has you know agreed to I mean I don't know I mean you know we could take a informal vote if you guys want but I think we we've, we've hashed this through pretty extensively <laughs> and there's only so many yeah. things that we can do I, I'm totally in disagreement with you know having inspected you know to be safe right. up the code that's not uh -uh. that's not our that's not our job 
I'm um, totally against If he that. leaves I'm it totally exactly the way it is, you know what, and it's not built to code, it falls off. Listen, all we're doing is going by the drawings. We didn't we didn't sign off on anything structural, architectural, okay? We've got a picture, it doesn't really show square foot is nothing. We don't know what, how that thing's attached to the house. It could be attached with sheet rock screws. I don't know. <laughs> it might not even be What's attached. wrong with that? If you make any motions, you gotta repeat this. Jeez. I left it there. But if you're gonna make any mock up these plans, mock up these. We're not marking it. So just, someone just needs to read that. You have a copy there. Attached to okay. the so proposed. Oh, you gotta read it. You gotta read in the exhibits. Before you make a motion, we need to get that into the record. Um, that's the same thing. Yeah, they're all late. I already marked them. Just read the cover sheet. Unless you, and then okay. You're gonna mark something or change. These something are all marked up. Okay, we're good to go. So I want to read into the record um, the plans for 55A Daily Lane. Plans marked as exhibits A through H. Want me to read all these in? Uh, exhibit A is plot plan dated 5/14/16, stamped by Curtis M. Johnson, PLS of Express Surveying and Over Mass. Exhibit B is sheet A1, existing floor plan dated 5-24-16, drawn by uh, John's drafting and design, Philip Karatokas, architect. Thank you. Uh, 14 Symphony Road, uh, PBD Mass, 01960. Exhibit C, uh, sheet A2, proposed second floor addition dated 5-24-16, uh, drawn by John's drafting and design. Exhibit D, sheet A3, Front elevation, existing and proposed new structure, dated 5-24-16. Exhibit E, sheet A4, rear ele elevation, existing and proposed, dated 5-24-16. Exhibit F, sheet A5, side elevations left and right, dated 5-24-16. Also included in the application is Exhibit G, uh, Plan Book 143, Plan 58, Plan of Land, Owner by Bartlett Realty Trust, dated March 1977. Uh, and recorded on 6 8 77 excuse me, shows Bailey Lane lots. Lastly, Exhibit H, uh, Definition Plan of Land by John uh, DeColos of PPD Mass, dated February 1984, uh, signed by the Planning Board on 6 6 -84. Plan Book 194, Plan 67, recorded 2 12 -85, that shows Heritage Way. Uh, applicant was Heritage Estates. There you go. Want to mark them up? <laughs> I'm not marking up anything. Come on, come on. Okay. You can take a um, recess if you want to start writing. Well, let me just ask, uh, go back to the audience. Is there anything else the audience, anybody in the audience has to say at this point um, with what's been proposed? Because, uh, yeah, sure. sure. You state your name for the record. Tim Doherty. Uh, it's, you know, next door to John Wright. Um, just wanted to say, you know, all of our neighbors are in favor of the project. Um, the house with the addition will actually conform very much to the neighborhood. Most of the houses in the area are two-story houses. It'll fit in very well um, with the street and the surrounding area. Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And also, um, I'm Tracy Lotz. I'm the reason this is a problem in one heritage way. <laughs> so I'm sorry, John Gray. Um, arguably, my view gets affected by his second floor. We're, we're completely in favor of this addition. I think it's going to only increase all of our property values. It's going to beautify the neighborhood. It's going to look lovely, and it's going to make his structure um, much better than it looks now. Like he's been improving it since he bought it, and it only improves it more. And all of us have been improving all of our properties since we bought it, and we're never going to finish at this point. But um, we're all in favor of it, and every every neighbor around his house came tonight, and no one has a problem. Okay. So. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. <coughs> okay. Sure. And I'm on 55 Bay Lane, next house down. Been there since 1982. Saw this house built in my backyard. It's literally because my house was built that way. We figured nobody would really build up into the front, so we took advantage of that. So with this, this would improve my view 100%. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. <laughs> Trust me, I'm taking it. So I'm all for it. My wife Linda Hummer is all for it. She couldn't come tonight, but um, we're we're going home, ready to go. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, 
So we have discussion, or if somebody wants to start working on a motion, if they want to do that, then we can't really move on anything tonight until we get a motion. So this is for the modification of the existing variance, which is going to include everything that we talked about tonight. So. Did someone say they had a question out there? I thought I... No? Everybody's good? Okay. All right, so we're probably going to go into board discussion, so no more audience, right? Yep. You guys all set? Except the applicant. We may have questions, I guess, as we go. So I think we've kind of hashed this out. But does anybody else have anything new and different they want to <laughs> discuss? No. Let's write no. this thing out. Yeah. All right. <laughs> We can take a recess. Do you want so to take a recess, or do you want to just to do that? Just so you know that you just have to use that does that variance wording. Yeah. The motions that owing to circumstances. So in the decision, we need to make those findings essentially. Do you want to take five to write? Yeah. Okay. So we just can't talk. Yeah. Sure. So we tell we take. Well, you can't. You can't. About business. <laughs> you can't. Um, we're supposed to, but you guys can do it anyway. So you're good. Um, do you want me to help you? Of course. <coughs> I wouldn't even know where to start with this.
All right. All right. So we're yeah. back. Go ahead. Yes. So what are we doing? Making a motion. Hang on. Whoa. Whoa. Unpause. Okay. I say so. We're back. So uh, Paul wants to make a motion on uh, this variance request. So. Uh, pursuant of Mass General Law, Chapter 48, Section 10, and the Georgetown Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 165, Article 2, Section 9 and 84, the petitioners John Roy A. Connell and Rhoda Samara Connell, owners of 55A Bailey Lane, Georgetown, Mass 101833 in the RC Zone, uh, Map 6A, Lot 15. I move that the board grant a modification to a previous variance ZBA file number 86-1 for a second floor addition and exe existing deck per plan submitted. The previous board has found on February 4th, 1986 that owing to circumstances relating to the soil conditions, shape or topography of such land or structures and especially affecting such land or structures but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located, a literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance or bylaw would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner. I further move that based on plans submitted, the board find that the desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without nullifying or sub substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of such ordinance or bylaw. Okay. Is there a second? A second motion. Oh. Who's that? Discussion. Sean Dean. Sean seconded. Okay. Sorry. So. Uh, yeah, Sean's going. All right. Is there any board discussion on this? <coughs> None at all. No. no. All right. So we'll take a roll call vote. This needs to be a supermajority. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Right. So Sean, how do you vote? Yes. Paul. Yes. Okay, Dave. Yes. Gina. Yes. And the chairman votes yes. So the uh, your variance is granted uh, per the plans that you've you've submitted. Okay. okay. <clears throat> um, I need to read this, right, Patty? Yes. Um, the, la the lapse. Yeah. So I need to mo uh, <laughs> notify you that a variance lapse of permit per Mass General Law Chapter 40A Section 10, uh, if the rights authorized by a variance are not exercised within one year of the date of grant of such variance, such rights shall lapse, provided, however, that the Zoning Board of Appeals and its discretion and upon written application of the grantee of such rights may extend the time for exercise of such rights for a period not to exceed six months and provided further that the application for such extension is filed with the Zoning Board of Appeals prior to the expiration of such uh, one year period. If the ZBA does not grant such extension within 30 days of the date of the application, uh, excuse me, of the date of the application therefore, and upon the expiration of the original one year period, such rights may be reestablished only after notice and a new hearing pursuant to the Georgetown Zoning Bylaws, uh, Master in Law 48. So if you don't, if you don't do anything within a year, Get with her because you may lose your lose your extension. variance. There's a few things you can do, but if this drags on for a while and you don't start construction, make sure you check with Patty on the longevity of the, the permit. Okay. All right. And then um, read that. Oh, thank you. Back in second grade, passing notes. <laughs> can you make it a little bit bigger next time? I just oh, yeah, uh, regarding the, the decision that was made tonight, the zoning clerk has 14 days to file a decision. Uh, any appeal to this decision shall be made pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 17, within 20 days after the date uh, the notice of decision was filed with the town clerk. And an applicant may file this decision before the 20 days, but does, uh, does so at their own risk. In other Could words, I have that? don't start construction until the appeal period has, has ended, or you do so at your own risk. Okay? Because the uh, variances do have a 20 day appeal period. Okay. Anything else, Patty? We so good? Just when this, so I have to make 14 days to write the decision and for them to sign uh, it. No, because that and one's. That time, yeah. I will give you a call and it's ready and give you the registry to record it. Excellent. All right. Do I hear a motion to close the hearing? So moved. So moved. Seconded. But Second. I think, Gina, I think Gina got it and Dave seconded. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None.
uh, tearing his clothes. Thank you. Give me that motion. See you, Norm. The what? Give me that motion.